I'm about to put this uh, sweater into soak uh, to block it and I thought I'd just film a very quick snippet before I block it just to show you what it looks like unblocked and you can see the stitch tension is quite uneven in fact I was surprised at how uneven it is the edges in those ribs curl slightly and the strand of color works a little bit uneven and bumpy one thing I noticed was um, whole sweater is knitted in the round so top down to the underarm and then I put the stitches on hold for the sleeves and then knitted the body down and then I picked up these stitches for the sleeves later. And what I did notice when I started the sleeves um, is that the knitting on the sleeves is much more even than the knitting on the actual body. And I don't know why that is. Um, I used the same needles, exact same set of needles. Um, I didn't even change the different type of needles because sometimes if you change from metal to wood and that kind of thing, that can affect your tension. But it was the same needles. The only difference was that on the yoke and the body, it filled the whole circular needle and on the sleeves I did magic loop. So whether my tension is a little bit firmer doing magic loop, I don't know. Um, but both sleeves are a lot more even than the body is. The bottom of the yoke is the worst because I think I was like knitting quite fast and rushing. Plus I had a lot of stitches on my needles. But it just shows that um, different conditions different um, knitting techniques things can affect your tension so obviously for me going from a long circular needle to a magic loop on the same circular needle has affected my tension but this definitely is blo blocking i'm slightly worried about the red yarn um bleeding into the white yarn i believe this is hand dyed um so i have actually knitted a swatch in red and uh, cream which i have soaked and that seems to be okay so i'm gonna Put this in for a little bit of a soak now um, and keep a very close eye on it to make sure that red doesn't bleed. Uh, I will soak it for just a few minutes. Normally I would soak for about 10 minutes. I might just do a, literally a couple of minutes. So this is the sweater. I'm just going to, I'm actually going to block it that way, I think. Just smoothing it out. So I just soaked it literally for a couple of minutes or maybe a minute. Normally I would soak it for longer, but I'm just worried about it uh, bleeding. So I didn't do that. Luckily it didn't bleed, so that's okay. Um, right, what do I need? So I'm going to start by putting a little bit, just putting it in the middle of my table. Sleeves are quite, seems, sleeves seem quite long, so I may need another mat on the sides here, but we'll see. So I'm going to start by, I'm going to use uh, nip blockers, uh, sorry, I'm going to use nip blockers and wires and pins. So I'm just going to make sure I've got the right, that's the back. I want to have the back at the bottom. So you can see I've got these markers in various places. I've left those in. They're just to um, help me measure so I've got to check the final measurements for the pattern, just to make sure they're correct. And it just helps me to measure um, certain bits. So this is probably right. This is where the waist shaping started. That's the end of the yoke. That's the end of the colour work. That's the um, second increase row. Things like that. But, so I'm going to... Take the one wire and pull it through the sleeves. So I'm not going in and out of the pattern of the sweater. I'm just going straight through the inside of the sleeve. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. There we go. Oops, where did we go? We're going to start up here by... Um, just putting these nip blockers at the back of the neck just to kind of anchor the sweater. So I'm not pulling it a lot, I'm just smoothing it out. And just there we go, just small one in there. I might put one in the front here as well. But I've also noticed here where I did one of the short row turns. Short rows on this side where I did the turns don't look that good. So what I'm going to do when I finish this is I'm going to go at the back and just tighten up the stitch a bit and then weave it in just to make that a little bit neater. 
So what I might do actually is take one of these markers that I put on the sleeve because I got one on the other sleeve, so I don't need both of them. I'm just going to put that one in here just to remind myself that I remember to go and fix that because it is easy to forget. And then I'm going to, one of the things that needs smoothing out really is this colour work. I'm not that happy with the colour work. Um, so I'm going to, it's just a bit uneven, but blocking will. I'm, when I said I'm not happy with the colour work, I'm happy with the colour work, but it just needs smoothing out a bit. So let's get some pens. So you can either use pens or you can use the net blockers. I'm going to use the pens actually, and maybe I'll use the net blockers. And I'm just going to stretch this out a bit and then put the neck blockers in. And I will need an extra blocking mat here for the sleeves. And I'm going to smooth the sleeve out. The sleeve looks really good. Um, I haven't put a mark, uh, a wire in on the bottom of the sleeve. What I'm going to do here is on this side of the sleeve, I'm just going to put a few nip lockers in. Don't need to put them like right next to each other because I'm not really um, stretching this bit out. If you're going to stretch it and pull it, then you'll need to anchor this bit completely. So you'd probably want to put wires in or the nip lockers like that. But because I'm not really stretching this, I just I don't really need to do that. But I probably don't really need anything on this side at all, but I'm going to put them in just, there we go. And then come down to the bottom of the sleeve here. I'm not, just going to make sure the rib, both sides of the rib, like the that side of the rib and this side of the rib is okay and smooth. And then I'm just going to put a uh, nip locker in, make sure it goes through both layers of fabric. I'll do the same thing on this sleeve. So find my wire, where's my wire gone there? Pull it out a bit. So what I want to do is I want to put this colour work under a little bit of pressure, a little bit of tension, just to make sure that it kind of um, smooths the colour work out a bit. So I just want to make sure it's under a little bit of tension here and here, so that this isn't like really stretched, but it's just under a bit of tension because it'll even out the colour work a bit because the colour work did look a little bit uneven. So basically, if your colour work doesn't look perfect, or even if your stocking stitch doesn't look perfect when you finish the sweater, don't worry about it. You can just, um, it will need blocking. So when you block it, just uh, smooth it out and it'll be fine. Right, so just gotta make sure I can see the increases kind of be too far over here. So the increases should be at the end row and they weren't really. So um, there we go. And then the one down here, one there. So I'm just smoothing this out and then I'll just put a few nip blockers in here just to kind of keep it flat and then sure the rib is level at the front and the back make sure the underneath the other side of the rib is okay and then pin those down okay so that's the body of the sweater that uh, the sleeves done so now i'm going to do the body the problem with blocking a sweater after it's been knitted like this is because obviously you've got the both legs the front and the back it does take a little bit longer to dry but it is very hot at the moment, so I'm hoping it will dry quickly. As long as it's dry by tomorrow morning, so I really need to block something else tomorrow morning, um, I'm okay. Right, so with the sides here, I've taken the blocking wire inside the sweater and I've come out of the other underarm. I could have probably gone right through to the top and come out of the top there, but I find it easier to come out of the underarm. And then I'm going to do the same on the other side. There is some waist shaping here. The waist shaping is here and here. So it's not waist shaping at the side, it's waist shaping here, which I find is a little bit more flattering and subtle. Not a lot of waist shaping, just like, I think it's eight stitches in total in the round, decreased over a number of rounds. So very subtle waist shaping. 
Okay, so let's just. Now, I am slightly worried about it. This, to me, this looks quite small. So I'm slightly worried um, about the size of this. So I might try and stretch the body a tiny bit. So I'm going to just do the here first. So I may have to just like smooth out the sleeves a bit in a minute because as I'm pulling this out a little bit, it's just making the sleeves punch up. So I may have to just look at the sleeves in a minute. So I've got to remember that I do have a bit of waist shaping here, but because the waist shaping is here and here rather at the sides, it doesn't really go in too much of the sides. Um, I do have to kind of bear that in mind a little bit. So I'm going to put a wire in here and here and then I'm not going to put anything here because I don't want to stretch this bit out because I do have the waist shaping coming down here and then the front and back of the rib um, you can use a wire but I think it's easier to use these lip blockers so I'm just going to make sure that I don't just pull the top layer out the front of the sweater but I also get the back so I'm just going to pull this down a little bit I think it's easier if you use a wire to make sure that it's straight uh, so you do have to be a little bit careful to make sure just make sure you get it straight i've taken some of these off the sleeves because i ran out because uh, i'm going to redo the sleeves anyway i think let's just redo the sleeves because they're a bit too close to the body so i'm going to just take these out and pull the sleeves out Just pull them away from the body a little bit. And then So this is what the sweater looks like. You can see already the colour works looks much better. So obviously this is now wet. I mean the tension is still not perfectly even. It's not going to look like it's machine knitted, but it's looking a lot better, I think. Um, so I'm going to uh, leave this to dry now. It's quite wet because the towel I used probably wasn't quite big enough. I could have done with a bigger towel or rolled it up in a first one towel first to get most of the water out and then run, rolled it up in a second dry towel to get more water out so it's still a little bit damp quite well quite damp um but i'm going to leave this to dry now yes i'm very pleased with it it looks so um, already you can see how much better it looks if i remember when i take this off the blocking board tomorrow i'll try and put on my dress form and take a short video clip or some photos that i may forget if i forget i will add the photos from the magazine to the end of this video if you have any questions, just leave them below this video and thank you for watching.